Hello. Okay, guys. Hi. <laughs> Are you guys ready for this ghost tour? No. Yes. You're not? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Me neither. We're going to go outside and meet Maddie from Haunted ATX. Okay. He's cool. going to take us around. We are in the historic Driscoll Hotel. Yep. Yes. I love this hotel. Me too. I like the beams. I just want to know before we start where everyone stands on their belief in ghosts. I believe in them 100%. And I believe in aliens. I'm not not a believer, and I'm not a believer. No, I think because I have such a fear of ghosts mm -hmm. that I just assume that you believed in them too. Oh. Ready? Hi. Nice ride. Thanks. Let's Here see what's you. happening inside the Driscoll. Yeah, Perfect. Let's head on in. Thank you. And we're gonna meet right underneath the stained glass. By the way, should I guess the peanuts oh, real quick? So welcome into the beautiful historic Driscoll Hotel. This place was built in 1886 by that guy right up there, Jesse Driscoll. And that brings us to our first spirit of the hour. Mrs. Bridges was the first front desk clerk here for the early part of the 20th century. And it was her love of the hotel, of course, that kept her bound to her duties after death. Guests and staff members here at the hotel have actually seen an apparition of this older uniformed woman pacing back and forth where her desk used to be right here and the site of the security deposit vault door right over there. Let's check that out. During the winter holidays, there's a very large, beautiful Christmas tree there right is. in the center of the lobby. Staff has seen in odd hours of the night the same apparition of this uniformed older lady rearranging the ornaments from what modern day staff put up to something, of course, you know, a little more traditional, her liking. This was, of course, her hotel. How did she die? Did we say that? Old age, just in the hotel. But in the hotel. In the hotel, yeah, she lived here. Where did she die? Under the Christmas tree? No. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably in her bedroom. Okay, we don't okay. Have that she just likes Christmas. Yeah. Okay. This is a historical painting denoting the very first long distance phone call that occurred from Austin, Texas, all the way up to Boston. Not really here to talk about the history. We're here to focus on Miss Samantha here in the front. Take a look at her glove. You're welcome to come up close if you'd like. Everything else looks like it's materialistically there, except for her glove right there holding the phone up. It's almost like light oh. passes right through it. So keep that in mind as we move to the next painting. So once again, very clearly, Samantha wants once more, she has that signature flaxen gold hair color, the fine gowns. Samantha was a real person. She was alive. However, she did not live to be the age portrayed in either of these paintings. The same person passed away when she was just a four-year-old little girl. I want to point out one more thing about the previous painting that you might have missed. How many of you saw this little girl the first I time? I definitely uh, saw her. I, I didn't. For some okay, context, no. we believe that her father, because of his wealth and status, had these paintings commissioned to portray this main woman as his daughter, had she been able to grow into this young woman and participate in these noteworthy events at the hotel. It's very likely if, if she was alive, she would have been invited because of her father. And whenever you're ready, we can yeah, head over to that grand like staircase. Let's do it. I've got to get through this. <laughs> All right. So, a lot of people will take pictures on the staircase behind me, and the most common occurrence is they'll get a little orb in their photo. If you're lucky, however, you might get a little shadow figure reflected in that mirror up there about the height and shape of a four-year-old girl's head. You get this little girl. You can notice nobody's up there. Nobody's standing up in the mezzanine level. But when we zoom in, we get this. And if somebody wants to pull out their phone camera and show, it is very hard to get a reflection oh, of anything. Here, I don't want to take a picture because I don't want to look through it later and see something in it and be by myself. Okay, I'm okay. gonna do just a series. <laughs> That's I have a fun fact, which is that Emily's great grandparents. Great, great grandparents. Great, great grandparents. Who were married in the late 1890s. I mean, you can tell it too. We're <laughs> married, she really They were married in the- <laughs> They were great, married great, yeah. in the late 1890s, or in the 1890s, and her father didn't want her at home alone. by herself alone as a young woman, and so paid for them to live here. And so, so she was here alone for like a solid year. No you should also really pay here. attention, maybe she's still here. Maybe. Did she die here? It's like... <laughs> The last story I tell you here at the Driscoll Hotel pertains to the suicide brides that linger the Driscoll Halls. And I tell you- I don't want to sit by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I tell it to you over here because most of the activity from these ladies occurs in the ladies' restroom right behind me. The first story of the suicide brides pertains to a woman in the early 1900s. When she and her fiance were to have all of their wedding related events here in the Driscoll Hotel. And of course she was ecstatic to spend the rest of her life with the love of her life 
until he leaves her at the altar. Books it, leaves town, doesn't even leave her a note. She cannot get over this, so she goes up to room 525, and she hangs herself in the rose petal-filled bedroom. Oh, God. But there was another tragedy here where a young bride-to-be also met a tragic end by her own hand. And there was a young engaged couple set to be married. A couple days before the actual ceremony, the man calls it off. All the wedding events canceled. He doesn't want to be with her anymore. She makes it up to room. Can you guess? 525. 525. Puts the do not disturb sign on the outside of the door, locks it, and she uses a pillow as a silencer as she shoots herself in the stomach oh, in the bathtub. Really it is very intense. When I get done telling all of this, my guests go check out the restroom, the ladies. Mom and daughter had taken a hearse tour and good old Black Betty outside. We come up here, they check out the restroom, and when they come out, the mom is walking in front of her daughter, kind of, you know, shrugging something off, scoffing, laughing to herself, but her daughter's eyes right behind wide open. So I'm like, ooh, you got to tell me what happened in the bathroom. <laughs> she says, OK, well, we walked into the bathroom. We saw it was empty, heard the door close behind us. And the further in we got, we heard a woman's voice from the back of the restroom saying, hello, is it you? Longingly. That's how she described it. Who was it? Exactly. Which one of the two do we think it was? One, the, the first one. Here. I can't go in there because no, I'm not a can't. lady. But I want to see. I mean, I can look and see if there's anyone in there. I feel like if and no if no one's, one's in, there, in there, we can. Well, yeah, if no one's in there, and then yep. you just make sure no one's I'll in there. I'll, 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 I'll go with that to make sure no one's in there. I feel like they re-wallpapered. Hello? Oh, wow, this is creepy in here. It is creepy in here. Is that the, one of the girls that died? Or is this just a random lady? No, no, no. Oh, don't you smell that? Like paint. That's what it is, it's paint. They redid it. OK, that's not spooky at all, it's just paint. Nice Maddie, thank you so much. Absolutely, no, this was so much Great. fun for Maddie. me too. Maddie. Thank you, Maddie, you're welcome. Thank you. This was really terrifying and fun. Yeah, I had goosebumps a lot. I wasn't expecting I that. actually did too, and usually this is the most low-key spot on my tour nights, so it was a little interesting. Maybe yeah. maybe because the spotlight's on us, there's nobody really around yeah. us, so. I really do have to go. Okay, <laughs> but in a different one. <laughs>